So uh, the Nevada Triangle is between Reno, Las Vegas, and Fresno. And it covers a lot of the Sierra, some of the rougher areas. And when I first looked at this, I initially thought, well, that's, that's kind of interesting, but how does that apply? And then I pulled out a map of Nevada and California, almost fell out of my seat. And it's in the Nevada Triangle. Um, somebody could say, look, it's a big area. There's mountains, there's inclement weather. Uh, you're talking about not only people disappearing on the ground, but planes that disappear and are never found, right? 2,000 planes in the Nevada Triangle that have disappeared. And that's per uh, a Reno investigator, not me. We're all familiar with the Bermuda Triangle, that infamous area where ships and planes have mysteriously vanished over the decades. But have you ever heard of the Nevada Triangle? Well, while it's smaller than its Atlantic counterpart, it's significantly more dangerous. In the past 60 years, the Nevada Triangle has claimed around 2,000 aircraft. In context, this is almost equivalent to one plane every single week. But that's not the scariest part. What's particularly eerie about the Nevada Triangle isn't just the staggering number of crashes, it's the fact that this phenomenon is rarely discussed, despite the fact that it has consumed numerous aircraft, almost equivalent to its counterpart, the Bermuda Triangle. This region, nestled in the Sierra Nevada mountains between Nevada and California, spans about 25,000 square miles of mountainous desert, which is about 60 times smaller than the Bermuda Triangle. The Bermuda Triangle covers an area of about 1,510,000 square miles, which gives us some reasons why it's capable of vanishing numerous amounts of aircraft and ships. The Nevada Triangle, on the other hand, which is about 60 times smaller, didn't just vanish with aircraft. It vanished with a staggering amount that is unbearable for the ears to hear, and many crash sites remain undiscovered to this day. It baffles me why no one is talking about this. But it's not only aircraft that seem to have vanished in this area. People have gone missing as well. Most of the lost planes were piloted by experienced aviators, and they disappeared under mysterious circumstances, with their wreckage or crash sites never being located. In numerous cases, the pilots were highly trained Air Force personnel operating advanced military aircraft. One of the most notable incidents involved the renowned aviator Steve Fawcett, who vanished in 2007. His case sparked a massive search operation, which ultimately led to the discovery of eight additional wrecks. Fawcett was no amateur. He held multiple world records for solo flights and glider aircraft. His disappearance added another layer of mystery to an already enigmatic region. The sheer number of unexplained vanishings and the backgrounds of the pilots involved prompt many to wonder what exactly is happening in the Nevada Triangle. With so many unanswered questions surrounding this area, it's a topic that deserves closer scrutiny and exploration. What secrets lie hidden within this remote landscape? Steve Fawcett was an extraordinary individual with a remarkable skill set. He not only flew around the world in a hot air balloon, a feat that many would find daunting, but he was also an expert in cross-country skiing, mountain climbing, and even participated in ultramarathons and triathlons. If anyone could survive in the wilderness, it was him. On September 3rd, while piloting a single-engine plane over Nevada's Great Basin Desert, he took off and never returned. After an extensive search that lasted over a month, he was declared dead. The following year, a hiker stumbled upon Fawcett's identification cards, and shortly after, the crash site was identified about 65 miles from his departure point. Additionally, two bones were discovered approximately half a mile from the wreckage, which were later confirmed to belong to Fawcett. The mystery remains. What happened to the rest of his remains? Speculation runs rampant, with some suggesting that animals may have scattered them, while others entertain more fantastical ideas involving creatures like the chupacabra or even aliens. The truth may never be known. 
One of the earliest incidents in the Nevada Triangle involved a Beam 24 bomber that went missing in 1943 during a routine night training mission. The bomber, carrying a full crew, took off from Hammerfield in Fresno, California, with a destination of Tucson, but it never arrived. The next day, a massive search operation commenced, deploying nine additional B-24s to locate the missing aircraft. However, instead of finding the first plane, another bomber inexplicably vanished during the search. Now this is becoming scary. Years later, in 1955, when the Huntington Lake Reservoir was drained for dam repairs, the wreckage of the second bomber was discovered. Investigators determined that the plane had encountered severe turbulence and lost hydraulic pressure. The captain instructed his crew to bail out upon seeing what seemed to be a snow-covered clearing, but only two soldiers jumped from the aircraft. Those who survived claimed the lake was not frozen, raising questions about the captain's decision. The plane was ultimately found resting 190 feet underwater, with its five crew members still at their stations. Meanwhile, Clinton Hester, the father of the co-pilot of the first missing bomber, launched a private search for his son that spanned 14 years. Even after his death in 1959, he had not uncovered any evidence of his son or the plane, suggesting the first plane just vanished into thin air. However, just a year later, geological researchers discovered airplane wreckage in a remote part of the desert, which was confirmed to be the missing Beams 24 piloted by 2nd Lieutenant Willis Turvey and co-piloted by 2nd Lieutenant Robert Hester. This body of water is now known as Hester Lake. Hester Lake derives its name today to honor Clint Hester, who would not give up the search for his son and crew aboard 41 to 28,463. Another intriguing tale unfolded in 1957 when Air Force Lieutenant David Steves was flying a T-33 training jet from Hamilton Air Force Base near San Francisco to Arizona. After the plane vanished, an extensive search was conducted but yielded no results, leading the Air Force to declare the 23-year-old pilot officially dead. Astonishingly, 54 days later, he reappeared, gaunt and dressed in tattered clothing, further fueling the air of mystery surrounding the Nevada Triangle. Now, this is really getting crazy. These incidents reflect just a fraction of the enigma that envelopes this region. With such a high number of unexplained disappearances and the baffling circumstances surrounding them, the Nevada Triangle remains a captivating subject of intrigue and speculation. What truly lies within this desolate expanse? The answers may be elusive, but the stories certainly capture the imagination. David Steves managed to reach a camp in the backcountry of Kings Canyon National Park, located east of Fresno. He reported that an explosion occurred in his plane, prompting him to eject. Dragging his parachute for warmth and nursing injuries from his landing, he crawled over 20 miles in freezing temperatures for 15 days without food or shelter. Eventually, he stumbled upon an abandoned cabin where he discovered a few cans of food and fishing gear. He claimed to have survived by fishing and hunting with his pistol. However, some skeptics questioned his story, with wild speculation suggesting he sold his plane to the Russians. Despite the doubts, Steves maintained his truthfulness, but he died a few years later, leaving his narrative shrouded in ambiguity. Ironically, he met his end in another plane crash. Fast forward two decades, Boy Scouts on a hike found the canopy of his jet, confirming that he was indeed telling the truth, yet the rest of the wreckage has never been located. On October 4, 1941, in a single day, five military aircraft went down, including a Peach 40 piloted by Lieutenant Leonard Leiden. After his squadron got lost over the mountains, he parachuted to safety, claiming his aircraft fell within a mile of his landing site in Kings Canyon National Park. Did anyone find his plane? Not at all. Another notable disappearance involved Charles Ogle, a wealthy real estate developer who took off from Oakland, California, in August 1964, en route to Las Vegas, but vanished without a trace. 
Despite being a Marine Corps trained pilot, he was never seen or heard from again, and his plane remains missing. Things took a strange turn on July 11, 1986, when Major Ross Mulhair crashed an F-117 near Bakersfield, California. The cause of the crash has never been officially disclosed, though congressional sources suggest he was flying an experimental aircraft engineered with unique materials and structural features. However, details about these features, such as whether they were disc-shaped, remain classified, as they were developed by Lockheed Martin. So, what could be causing so many disappearances in the Nevada Triangle? Some theories suggest that the area's climate creates unique atmospheric conditions capable of ripping aircraft from the sky. In Fawcett's case, it's speculated that conditions may have produced a downdraft of 650 kph, while his aircraft could only climb at 500 kph, leaving him with no chance of survival. Despite this, the NTSB found no mechanical issues with his plane. As for the other mysterious disappearances, conspiracy theorists have linked them to Area 51, which is located east of the Triangle, where the Air Force conducts tests on secret prototype aircraft. Yet, many experts attribute these incidents to the geographical features and atmospheric conditions of the Sierra Nevada mountains, which run perpendicular to the jet stream, leading to volatile and unpredictable winds and downdrafts. This weather phenomenon, sometimes referred to as a mountain wave, can cause planes to be seemingly ripped from the air and crash. Along the eastern edge of the Nevada Triangle sits the highly classified government facility Area 51. I know including Area 51 in this topic will raise more serious questions than answers, but you will be shocked to realize that in 1938, the same year aircraft started vanishing in this region, is the year Area 51 began its research, though it officially opened in 1955. For accuracy, Area 51 is the common name of a highly classified United States Air Force USAF, facility within the Nevada Test and Training Range. A remote detachment administered by Edwards Air Force Base. Details of its operations are not made public, but the USAF says that it is an open training range and it is commonly thought to support the development and testing of experimental aircraft and weapons systems. The USAF and CIA acquired the site in 1955, primarily for flight testing the Lockheed U-2 aircraft. The question is, why would planes suddenly start vanishing in this region only after Area 51 began its research? This raises eyebrows, and the frustrating part about it is that disappearances happen, yet nobody can explain them. The area itself is restricted from the public, and aircraft are forbidden from flying over it. While we will not attribute the vanished flights to Area 51's test activities, it still raises eyebrows as to how it could be coincidental for a secret classified government activity to coexist in the same place with a mysterious triangle that only became notable at the advent of the area's launch. Conspiracy theories explain that the remains from the Roswell crash are allegedly stored at the facility, sparking decades-long rumors that its real purpose is for studying and communicating with extraterrestrials. Security around the perimeter is extremely tight. Anyone who attempts to approach will quickly notice something far more unnerving than aliens. These are locked and loaded guards ready to take them out. And as it is written on one of their caution plates, use of deadly force authorized. As such, some speculate that the real reason so many civilian aircraft have disappeared in the area is due to the fact that the government has been taking down any aircraft that gets too close. While it may seem a bit far-fetched, the disappearances started around the same time the facility opened, adding to the conspiracy theories. In August 2013, the CIA published a declassified document addressing the enigma and operations carried out in Area 51. Area 51 was created for a single purpose, to test a secret aircraft project codenamed Aquatone. Aquatone is the codename representing the U-2, an aircraft built to spy over the Soviet Union during the periods of the Cold War. It is said that the Soviet Premier, Nikita Khrushchev, 
publicly boasted about his country's nuclear weapons and capabilities. They were bragging about their missiles, they were bragging about their bombers, they were bragging about this and that, uh, that got our government's attention. Prior to this period, no one knew what was happening in Area 51, and some attributed it to a secret government project concerning extraterrestrial activities like aliens. Though not proven, some claim that these aircraft may have been adopted by these aliens, and that they're using the Nevada Triangle as a portal or means of transit through extraterrestrial space. But this claim was also dismissed, as conspiracy theorists couldn't back up their assertions. Area 51 itself is a military base and has nothing to do with extraterrestrial activities, so attributing it to extraterrestrial operations requires sufficient evidence. But the intriguing fact is that even if Area 51 was to track down aircraft that happened to get too close, the question still remains. Where did these aircraft crash? While most vanished flights left some trace, the largest number vanished without a trace. This explains why other conspiracy theorists suggest that the disappearances could be caused by something different from Area 51 tracking down the aircraft. At least, researchers could have located many crash sites. We are talking about a staggering 2,000 missing aircraft. So, they suggested that just like the Bermuda Triangle Mysteries, which popular conspiracy theories suggest could be a portal, the same mechanism is happening in the Nevada Triangle. According to Albert Einstein, space and time are woven together, forming a smooth four-dimensional fabric known as space-time. A recent study by NASA proved that Einstein was not only correct, but also that the space-time vortex surrounding Earth is distorted due to the spinning motion of the planet. Some fringe theorists have posited that a rift has occurred in the fabric, causing small portals to open up in specific areas around the world, such as the Bermuda and Nevada Triangles. However, there has been no proof to date of such a rift and the questions of where these portals lead to and why they would have been formed in these specific locations have never been answered. Scientists have been researching this area for decades to uncover the mystery behind these disappearances, and they realize that. The reason so many crash sites remain undiscovered can likely be attributed to the complex, rugged terrain and heavy vegetation. During the search for Fawcett, eight other crash sites were indeed discovered, suggesting that many more could be concealed within the peaks and valleys of the Sierra Nevada mountains. Fast-moving winds off the nearby Pacific Ocean frequently push through the steep mountainsides, since the mountains sit at higher altitudes and are liable to receive the winds without disruptions from other hills, producing a phenomenon known as mountain waves. The downdrafts produced by mountain waves are frequently strong and forceful, posing an extreme hazard to pilots. Hundreds of feet can quickly be lost, and some mountain waves and lee winds are strong enough to overpower the ability of a light plane to avoid being pancaked into the terrain below. Because of this, pilots are encouraged to maintain a high enough altitude above the terrain to provide a buffer in the event that downdrafts are encountered. Even some clear weather days in some Sierra locations are unflyable. Reading the scientific point of view, it sounds quite possible that the terrain could be the reason for these disappearances. But the question is, why would they always take on a triangular or pyramidal shape? The Bermuda Triangle is triangular in shape, acting similarly to its counterpart, the Nevada Triangle, and as it stands, both have been exhibiting strange behavior, with their activities remaining a mystery to scientists. As for the Bermuda Triangle, Researchers claim they have finally solved the mystery, which I will make a video on. But does it mean the triangle is a mysterious symbol? Well, let's find out. According to my perspective from what I've seen in both cases, these areas might be controlled by something different from natural circumstances, but more of a supernatural influence, and that's the reason why scientists won't be able to explain it. In the ancient Egyptian world, the pyramidal or triangular shape of the Great Pyramid wasn't just built that way. They claimed it was due to its spiritual significance. The pyramid structure, with its wide base and pointed apex, represents stability and balance. 
This iconic shape is seen as a bridge between the physical and spiritual worlds, embodying the principles of harmony and equilibrium. Now that we understand the meaning of the triangular shapes, could it be the reason for the disappearances since it serves as the point where the physical and spiritual meet? Let us know your thoughts in the comment section. Or could there be something else at play? The truth remains elusive. Thank you for hanging out with us today. If you found this discussion enjoyable or informative, please give us a thumbs up, it truly helps the channel grow. If there's a particular topic you'd like us to cover, let us know in the comments. Until next time, remember to be safe, be kind, and know that you are appreciated.